Hello and welcome back to this channel. So today's topic is going to be Adobe Fresco tips. So let's get started. The first one that I'm going to talk about is the free brushes. That is, if you go to pixel brushes here and click on this plus, you can click on get more brushes and it's going to take you to Adobe Photoshop where you have to sign in because you have to be subscribed to Adobe services. It could be just Photoshop as well. It'll still work. And then when you go there, you can see so many brushes to be downloaded for absolutely free. I've actually made a tutorial on this. I will link it in the description box below and on how to download this and get it onto your fresco. Oh, there's a new release that is summer 2020 brushes, which I don't have. I think I'll have to go download it after this tutorial. So next one you can talk about is shapes. So if you haven't noticed already, here's a tiny thing called as shapes. If I click on this, so there's one thing called as basic shape that is circle, square and a polygon. And if you click on this plus button here, it increases the number of corners of the polygon, but it stops at this. So anyway, once you have this ready, you can choose any color that you want. You can click on all and let's go to my library and maybe make this nice and orange. And you can also click on fill. And when you click on that, it will give you two options, either a vector or a pixel. So I'm just going to click on vector because then you can actually modify it and stuff like that. But once you are done with that, it creates one more similar shape on top of it. So if you want to get rid of it, you can do that. But I just want to show you the other options here. You can just drag it a little bit like this and click on erase to take away that particular shape and make it like this. So with this, you can create some really unique shapes. The other option is the mask option. So I'm just going to click here and click on a new layer and I'm going to choose a different color here, maybe black and fill it up. And now I'll move it like this and go to a new layer and click on mask. And now I'll go ahead and click on my pixel brush. And now you can choose any color that you want and any brush size that you want. And that and you can actually go here and try to draw in into the shape. So this is what you can do with the basic shapes, but there are other options right here. And that is if you go in, you can see something called as my library. So I actually got these images scanned from Adobe Capture. So it's a very good app if you want to scan something like you hand draw it and then you can use it to create vector elements. For example, this one, I'm just going to go ahead and click on new layer and I can choose any color that I want and click on fill and vector and then it's going to imprint that on my artwork. So it is very nice when you want to create some collage or st stuff like that. So it works pretty great for that as well. And once you're done with all these things related to shapes and if you want to get out of this, you just have to click on any brush here and it just goes out of the tool. OK, so next up is ruler. So as you know, in Procreate, you can just draw a straight line and hold it and then it gets converted into a very straight line. But apparently Fresco doesn't still have it, but I have seen some people use it. I think it's an experimental basis. It's not available to everyone, I guess. But don't worry, you have something called as a ruler. So this ruler, you can move around like this or you can use your fingers to move it in any angle. So I basically use this mostly for either calligraphy or lettering works or for perspective drawing. So you can choose any color you want and I'm going to choose a basic round vector brush and you can just draw a line like this. And then like this. So once you have this ready, you don't want the ruler again, just click on it and it just moves away. So with this, you can always go ahead and make different things like draw buildings and stuff like that. OK, this is a rough drawing, but I just wanted to show you like how you can draw these things. But make sure that when you're drawing, you're on a different layer, not on the same layer as me, so that you can uncheck the perspective lines. I also told you about using it to make lettering lines. OK, our next thing is vector illustrations. So let me just go to the vector brush and I'm going to go into basic and taper. So if you already know this, you can always adjust the things about these brushes like pressure dynamics, velocity dy dynamics and all that. You can also adjust the smoothing of this brush. That is the higher it is, the flow is like this and the lower it is. It's much harder flow. I usually like to keep it in between. So let's just draw some character.
Okay, so this is a vector illustration. The good thing about this is whatever you draw here, it shows up on your Illustrator. You can find it as cloud documents. You can work for the basic sketches here and go pick it up in Illustrator and it will be fine as well. So let me just put in as king. Next up is experimental features. So this is not something really important or something highlight of this video because this is usually not available. When you come here, into experimental settings. If there's anything new that Adobe team is experimenting with, it'll show up here and you can use it and you can turn it on and then it'll be available for you. But right now there's nothing, so I don't have anything to show to you. Okay, next, let's talk about blend modes. So I'm just gonna show you a quick illustration for here. I just have a yellow color. So let me just, no, I'm going to take a vector brush and draw some shapes like this. And now you can see that it is so, you know, opaque right here. And here you can see that it is actually different colors. I did not make it as a separate shape, but I just use blend modes. That is, you can click here and go to different blend modes and you can see the difference right here. Hold on a second. And you can see the difference right here, like multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darker color. So you can choose whatever options that you want and can also select the opacity but that's the blend mode magic i actually created this illustration using the blend mode technique as you can see here these are different colors and that's how i created that effect next up are live brushes so i already have a tutorial on live brushes if you have missed it go check it out there's one on oil brushes and there's one on watercolor brushes so today we're going to experiment with watercolor brushes if you go into watercolor and i'm going to choose watercolor wash soft and let me pick a nice color I'll take this blue and I'm going to go ahead and draw or paint a little bit like this and I'm going to select one more color this yellow and I'm going to paint it here like this okay so now to blend these two you can always do this and it blends easily as well but if you want a very gradual blend you want it to be subtle or something like that so that brings us to the next thing that is this button right here so okay there's more to talk about this button but we're going to talk about it after this so when you are in live brushes if you click and hold on this one it creates this unique effect where you can actually use it to blend two different colors without making sure that one color tops the other one so example you can just bring it down here and create a different you know things like this. Okay, so that brings us to the next thing, this round blob, what is this? So you can move this and keep it anywhere you want. So when you're not on live brushes, and if you're on vector brushes, I'll just go back to my illustration here quickly. And in here, for example, I'm just gonna go ahead and take blue. And I decide I want blue and I want to change this. So what I can do is I can just click and hold on this button. Notice I'm still on the brush setting and I can just erase this off like this. And once I let go, it becomes a brush again and I can write king or queen or anything I want. As simple as that. So the main thing about non switching between eraser and the brush tool is that when you click and hold, it uses the same brush setting that is it uses the same basic end taper as an eraser and makes the erasing possible. Next up is the paint bucket tool. So one good thing is here, you don't have to click and drag and drop to color some area. You can use the paint bucket tool to do that job for you. You can just click and it works only if you have ends closed. So do that and go here and let's change the color. There you go, you have your different colors ready. So the next thing that we know is the recent colors. So once you go here and if you just go to your any brush tool, 
you can see all the colors here. And if you click on colors, there's something called as recent. And these are all the colors that we recently used in this artboard. So this is pretty helpful when you want to make a chart of colors that you have used and stuff like that. You have it already. And if you click on all and if you go to library, you'll see all these libraries from your Adobe color library. That is which the same ones that you use for Photoshop or Illustrator. And the last step, which I want to tell you guys, is that you can actually move these things wherever you want so you don't have to stick to one particular position it's the same with all these things you can move them wherever you want and you can quickly like you know select things and stuff like that okay so that brings us to the end of this tutorial and i hope you guys liked it if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while subscribing don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you get notified whenever i post a new video if you have any questions about adobe fresco don't hesitate to leave a comment below and uh, i guess i'll see you in the next video then Bye bye